Just picked up some last minute odds and ends for the trip I'm going on this weekend, which is to the California Riding and Hiking Trail. That's in Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, my name is Grimace. You're watching Hike California. This channel is all about hiking, backpacking, backpacking here in the state of California. If those things interest you, you are in luck. So California Riding and Hiking Trail, this is a trail that was initially developed to literally circumnavigate the entire state of California. Um, tastes changed as they were sort of building it and it sort of became more about building loops nearer to cities, nearer to population centers. So they gave up on building the California Riding and Hiking Trail. Um, and really the only section that still exists in that same form still called that is this piece in Joshua Tree National Park. A lot of the other portions of the trail have been integrated into other trails elsewhere. Uh, but for the, for the ones called California Riding and Hiking Trail, this is the only one left. I'm going to be taking two nights, three days uh, out in Joshua Tree National Park. The weather could not be better. It's going to be high 60s. Um, it's going to be great to be back out on the trail. The fires have sort of limited how much I've been able to do. So uh, I thought I'd show you some gear because it's been a long time since I did a gear video. So come along. I'm going to show you what I'm taking on a two night, three day trip to Joshua Tree National Park, California riding and hiking trail. Come on. Next up is all the things I'm going to be wearing. Um, so that includes, I've got this outdoor research sun cap, sun runner cap here. I really love this thing. It's got the cowl that goes down behind your neck to kind of keep the sun off of your neck. It's very breathable. It cleans super easily. And I've got just some Nike running shorts. I think these are five inch inseam sunglasses, just uh, prescription sunglasses. My Arcteryx Cormac shirt. It's a long sleeve shirt. It's got sort of a, a mock neck kind of a, a top. So again, it just keeps a little bit of sun off. I like having, I don't like putting on sunblock. People think that's weird, but I hate sunblock. I hate having to reapply it. I hate having the goopiness. I hate having the weight. So I would much rather use clothing to keep sun off of myself whenever possible, um, rather than relying on sunblock. I just don't like to take it. Sun gloves are Glacier Glove Ascension Bay sun gloves. And on the rare chances when I do need a little extra tread, um, these are built for rock climbing, so they do have a little bit of grip on them too, which is sometimes helpful, out of, of limited use. <laughs> Dirty Girl Gators, these are great for keeping um, dirt and debris out of my shoes. This is a buff that I wear as a neck gaiter, and then it has multiple purposes uh, that I use it for wiping things down, cleaning things, um, sweat rag to wipe down my tent, uh, when I'm cooking, like I use this for a, a lot of stuff. Darn tough quarter cushion hiker socks. This is my, uh, this is a relatively new piece of gear for me. This is a Sunto Ambit, uh, watch with, it does have a heart, heart rate monitor, Ambit 3. Uh, it does have a heart rate monitor that I don't take backpacking but i use it for my running also uh my ultra fours ultra lone peak fours these are great i've been using these for hundreds of miles they're still holding up i bought some 4.5s at the beginning of the year but obviously um haven't had a chance to use them as much as i would have liked so these are still going pretty strong um just a couple of where you know little nicks little abrasions but for the most part you know not not bad shape and uh, I do have orthopedic inserts that I put into them, but uh, those are in my running shoes right now, which are also ultras, Escalante 2.5s. Uh, and just my carbon fiber um, Cascade Mountain Tech trekking poles. So that's the stuff that I will be wearing or, you know, carrying in the case of the poles. So my worn weight right here. And here's the gear loadout. So... We'll kind of work right to left on this, I think. So we're going to start with just the pack. This is my Nick 40, Catabatic Gear Nick 40 light skin pack. It's a waterproof material that they make sales out of. I don't think they actually sell this pack anymore, which is too bad because I love it. But it is a frameless pack, so it does have its own challenges. But I keep a little pocket on it. It's a Zimmer built pocket, uh, custom made for my phone. Um... Up here is my tent. 
That's the Dan Durston, the XMID Dan Durston one person tent. It's a really large tent, really large footprint. It may be overkill for this trip, but both of my sort of one person tents that I have left are pretty big. So we'll take this one. I like it. And then some various uh, mini groundhog, well, I'm sorry, some various um, Easton nano stakes and some shepherd hook stakes. Down here are my feet and a uh, little first aid kit. I just keep it in this bag, but this is like a completely reconstituted kit. It's got a couple of pills, um, some bandages, some, some uh, anti-blister, not much. It's my poop kit. So we've got a deuce of spades. A little bit of soap, a bidet, and a hand sanitizer. Nylo fume bag to go inside of the bag. Even though it's waterproof, I just like to double down there just in case because you don't want to get your quilt wet. This is my quilt. This is the UGQ Bandit 20 degree quilt. Um, yes, there's a Christmas wrapping paper box over here that my cat is obsessed with. Um, so this is a UGQ Bandit 20 degree quilt. I may do a full review on this quilt. I'm, I love this quilt. I love it to death. This particular trip, even though we are going to Joshua Tree and it's going to be, and it's the desert, it's going to be 60 during the day and probably 40 degrees at night. This is a 20 degree quilt. Um, I think it should be ample. We'll get into, I have some, some other stuff to wear at night to kind of keep myself warm, but it's going to be, this is going to be the biggest test I think that this thing has had since I got it. I have a C to Summit Eros Ultralight Pillow and a Big Agnes AXL insulated um, sleeping pad. My Lightsmith sit pad goes with me everywhere. Not only is it a sit pad, it's the frame of my pack. It's I use it as a doormat. I use it as a wind screen. I use this for a lot of things. Uh, Nightcore NU25 headlamp. I'm not actually taking many electronics on this trip. I haven't yet decided what I want to use to film, whether I want to use the camera, the phone camera that I'm currently recording on, or whether I want a dedicated camera for it. It's a little tricky because it's hard to have a dedicated camera with this particular pack because the strap is so wide, my capture clip doesn't fit on it. So I need to come up with a solution to that. I haven't done that yet. Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Down Hoodie Jacket and Mountain Whisperer, I think this is called the uh, Ghost Whisperer, Ghost Whis Mountain Hardware <laughs> Ghost Whisperer Down Jacket, Mountain Hardware, I think it's called the Microdome. Uh, it's just a beanie. It's really warm for it's, it's super light and, and pretty warm. So, in comparison with the hood, that should keep me plenty warm at night. Um, I do, I am bringing, because it's not supposed to rain. I went back and forth on whether to bring my raincoat, which doubles as a helium two doubles as a wind jacket or this dedicated wind jacket. This is the Marmot Air Light, super lightweight. You just wear it while you hike. It's just stops wind. Um, and then some, these are actually dancer pants. I think they're called body stopper or something like that. Rip stop pants. So these will cut the wind at night especially when I'm out and about and like cooking and, and, you know, doing everything at, at night. Cause I am going with someone. So there's going to be some social time, uh, going with a person. So these two combined should help with that. Uh, still on the fence. This is my sleep shirt. It's just a task performance, Carrollton long sleeve shirt, spare socks, darn tufts. Also down here, we have the, uh, lock sack, op sack that I'm going to carry my food in my utensil, which is the, uh, this is the Tokes. What are you see to summit actually long handled spoon. I used to have a Tokes with a polished bowl. I don't know what happened to it. Bummer. And then this is my Tokes 750 milliliter, uh, pot. So I thought about going stoveless, but because I'm kind of cooking for both of us, both people on this trip, I am bringing this just so that I can actually boil water. Inside of this is a sponge that I use for cleanup, fuel, a mini Bic lighter, and then a BRS 3000 titanium stove. Um, I said I wasn't bringing many electronics. I have a 10,000 milliamp hour 
anchor battery. This thing is super light for 10,000 milliamp hours. Um, great battery. I love this thing. And then just a little charger cable that converts USB to uh, USB-C. USB to USB-C. Um, this is my sort of toiletry kit. Uh, so it all goes in this little tiny uh, Z-Pax stuff sack. It's a Rology mini cork ball, my Lightsmith thumbprint, toothpaste, gurney goo anti-friction, uh, chapstick just again from Lightsmith, and then a little Swiss Army Victorinox. And then this is sort of the great thing about this trip. So we're going to be hitting, like I said, it's not going to be super hot in Joshua Tree. I'm still not sure about the water carry. We are going to be caching water. Um, everyone recommends about six liters of water carry per person per day. I don't know if that's going to apply for our temperatures, but I want to be prepared. So I went out and just bought this uh, Catadyne Be Free three liter bag. This is actually a gravity filter and you hang it from a tree and it filters overnight, filters your water overnight. I won't be filtering water on this trip, which is very strange to say, but because we'll be caching, it's all going to be filtered. It's all going to be like clean water. So I just, I'm leaving a lot of the pieces behind just taking the bag for the three liter carry and uh, my two liter ever new bottle and then a one liter smart bottle, smart water bottle. So that's three five, six liters of water. And like I said, I'll be caching water. And at the end of the day, I can decide like, oh, I didn't actually use that much or I did use that much. And I can sort of figure it out as I go. We're going to be out for two nights. So do a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm very excited. So that's it. That's the trip. That's the gear. Um, I'm coming in at a base weight of about nine and a half pounds. Uh, I'm going to put a link below to my lighter pack so you can check it out. Uh, and as I update it, I'll update it there as well. So if I leave out the, the windbreaker, for instance, um, whether I go to a dedicated rain jacket or something else, I'll change all of that there. So that's it. That's my gear list for the California Riding and Hiking Trail, November 2020. Uh, if you got value out of this video, click that thumbs up button. If you like hiking, backpacking, backpacking gear, state of California, good news. This channel's for you. Click that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and hey, let's do this again sometime.